Hello everyone, let's look at one question which is confusing many students, you know. So first let's read this question. The question says that which of the following could be the best method? Which of the following could be the best method while performing a system audit to see and evaluate whether proper segregation of duties is being followed, is being complied or not? Again, I am repeating the question, which of the following could be the best method while performing a system audit to see and evaluate whether proper segregation of duties is being followed or not. Option number A, discuss with IT managers. Option number B, review the job descriptions. Option number C, research past IS audit reports. Option number D is evaluate the organizational structure. Now guys, I always say this to everyone that, you know, there is a difference between understanding a concept. There is a difference between understanding a concept and application of that concept while you solve the question answers. There is a difference. You know, you, it's not that, you know, if you just mug up or if you just read the review manual, you know, you can answer any questions. It's not going to work like that okay understanding the concepts is one thing application of those concepts while solving the the q and a it, it is something different when you solve the q and a you are, there is a there is a involvement of you know reading skills your interpretation skills how are you able to identify the hidden hints in the questions are you able to think from the isaka's mindset I know many people, many people, they, they come and tell me that, you know, uh, when they solve the questions without looking at the answer, they make lots of mistakes. And I say that it is absolutely normal to make mistakes. It is absolutely normal to make mistakes. Okay. You need to understand one thing that instead of focusing on answering the correct answer in the first attempt, Instead of, you know, having the focus that, you know, you have to answer a particular question in the first attempt. Instead of that, your focus should always be that even if the answer is in front of you, whether it is A or let, let's say uh, here, let, let's say the answer is D. Even if the answer is in front of you, we need to understand that what is the, you know, thought process. What is the thought process? What is the uh, reason? What is the justification? How Isaka is thinking in this particular question? You know, we have to understand that. If you're able to understand those things, if you're revising those things, you know, it doesn't matter if you're answering the, uh, the questions correctly or not. You will still be able to crack the exam very easily. Your focus should always and always be that, you know, what is the, you know, uh, thought process in the back end? You know, behind choosing a particular answer, that should be your focus. Not that you know you have to answer. You know, uh, in the first attempt. You know, you know what? When I was studying for my exam, you know, uh, when I gave my exam long back in the year 2018, you know, that time, you know, I used to look at the answer. I never tried to, you know, uh, answer any question without looking at the answer. I used to look at the answer, but. I used to always see that, you know, even if, even the answer is in front of me, what is that thought process? You know, what is that Isaka's, you know, thought process behind this question? How to think in the exam if I get this question? Okay, so that thing should be, you know, in your mind, not that you have to answer it correctly. You know, because I know some students, you know, they have told me that, uh, you know, like I mark the answers, you know, when, when I explain things, you know, but the thing is that I want you to understand that, you know, we have to understand the, the thought process behind each and every question. If you do that, trust me, I guarantee you that, you know, you will be able to answer any questions very easily. Okay. And you will, you'll be able to crack the exam very, very easily. Okay. So let's come back to this question. So here, you know, if you, if you look at this question, you know, uh, you know, anyone will go with option number D, you know, just a second. Yeah. Anyone with, you know, they will just blindly go with option number D saying that, you know, we have to evaluate the organizational structure. Okay. 
but here the answer is something different okay so let me reveal the correct answer the correct answer over here is option number a discuss with the it managers now you know uh, some students were asking me questions that you know how can I discuss with it managers if we start discussing with them you know don't you think so that you know they can manipulate the answers you know they can they can have uh, i mean uh, like you know they can answer you know i mean they they'll, they'll obviously you know if you if you try to ask something to the managers definitely they'll be giving the answers what you are expecting you know from them so they will they'll uh, try to you know hide the things so how can this be the best method to know whether proper sod is there or not how can this be the best method in fact you know this 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 should have been the best method okay so this is where your you know uh, you know this is the best this this question is the best example where i can you know explain you why there is a difference between understanding things and uh, application of the things which you have already learned okay so here the answer is option number a discuss with the it managers let's uh, you know try to evaluate why the answer is option number a so you know <clears throat> in domain number 1 there is a topic which is like you know techniques for gathering evidences so we have you know a lot of techniques like you know reviewing of the is organizational structure policies and procedures is standards documentation you know interviewing observation reperformance walk throughs you know all those techniques uh, you know have been discussed you know previously in the previous lecture okay uh, so the thing is that when we talk about techniques for gathering evidences you know we can say that you know there can be reviewing and then there can be other than reviewing when we when we why 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 the hell i am dividing techniques into two categories okay why i am dividing the techniques into two categories the the, the simple reason you know you'll be able you'll be able to you know understand that very soon the reason for dividing the techniques into two the reason is here when we talk about reviewing something whether it is reviewing the organizational structure or policies and procedures or standards or documentation or whatever here you know we can say that there is a kind of one way communication okay i mean we are not involving you know uh, there is no two way communication uh, you know we are not involving the audit as such okay so we are just re reviewing the organizational structure the documentation standards policies procedures we are just reviewing that okay but when we talk about other than reviewing when we talk about interviewing when we talk about observing when we talk about discussing when we talk about reperformance don't you think so we are also involving the auditees here okay we are involving the auditees here so the thing is that you know always you know if, if we look from the isaka's angle they have given more preference to this one they say that you know this is more active this is more active approach of you know gathering evidence than this one here we are just reviewing things but here we are actually doing the work you know so this is considered to be the more active you know than this one okay now uh, when you when you see the answer for this question in the official qae they have not mentioned anything whatever i am giving you the explanation they have not mentioned anything in the justification part okay <laughs> you know if you if you just read their justification you know you will if you just find that you know they have literally not explained the reason the the back end the, the the back end thought process you know behind choosing option number a and that's the reason i tell you always that you know in some questions you know uh, that thought process will not be given properly but we have to apply our logic we have to analyze we have to evaluate a particular question okay so here the the thought process is that uh you know like if you if you look at option number b option number b is saying review the job descriptions review c is research past it audit reports o obviously you know c will if c will definitely not come but again c also comes under reviewing right and d is saying evaluate the organizational structure again we are reviewing the organizational structure and we are evaluating from ourselves okay so again it's a review okay but option number a is discuss with it managers discussion will include discussion will include interviewing discussion will include observation okay so discussion is going to include observation interviewing all those things right so they are so as per the isaka's mindset they are giving more preference to other than reviewing okay that's the reason this is the answer again now this is the logical logical way of thinking 
logical way of thinking now i'll give you a shortcut trick now let's talk about the shortcut trick if this kind of questions comes in your exam there is a concept of odd man out i hope that everyone knows about what exactly we mean when we when we talk about odd man out here if we if we look at the four options option a b c and d again you know we can find that you know here like you know we are just reviewing it's a one way reviewing one way evaluating organizational structure one way but you know if 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 you see if you if you try to you know uh, compare all the four options you can you can easily find that option number a is odd man out okay so here you know you can even go with that with that logic that this is odd man out and that's reason this is the answer so this is a a trick you know i mean it, it won't work all the time to be very honest but yes it it will work you know in in lots of cases so when you when you when you get stuck in your exam with such kind of questions you can apply this odd man out concept where, wherein you know uh, you can see that you know if if this particular option is kind of you know odd man out as compared to other options if it is yes then um, 99.9% this has to be the answer okay so we have discussed this particular question in the two uh, you know angles like okay so okay so the correct answer for this is option number a discuss with it managers but if you uh, read the justification you know whatever we have discussed you know this is not the, like they have not mentioned anything whatever we have discussed okay but this is something which you have to interpret and that's the reason you know answering correctly is it is not at all important you know what when i gave my exam when i gave my exam you know i uh, like when i was studying for my exam you know when i was studying the official qa you know i never focused on, on answering the questions correctly in fact every time i used to keep answers in front of me my way of studying was answers has to be in front of me i want the answers in front of me okay people say that you are mugging up no no you are mugging up if you do not understand the thought process behind it if you are not able to differentiate why uh, option number a is the uh, correct one and why not the others one uh, why not the others okay if that's the case you are mugging up okay uh, but other than that you know like if you are trying to think you know from the logical angle you know you are not mugging up okay in fact you are building your strong you are building your base you know in a very strong manner which will definitely help you to crack your exam and i know that there are few questions in the official qa which are controversial also i mean i know some questions especially like in domain 5 uh, the topic the concept itself is not covered in the a uh, review manual but they have mentioned that question in the official qa i know such kind of questions there were i think one or two questions wherein even i was not uh, like really happy with the answers given there so there are few things but you know we have to understand that you know out of 150 questions in the exam there will be 150 questions in the exam out of 150 questions you know we can say that roughly you know 70 questions 70 to 75 questions 50% of the paper will be easy ones it will be it will be somewhere similar to the official qa you know and that too uh, it will be easy ones like you know you can be able to answer them okay then there will be next uh, category of uh, we can say 40 to 50 questions now this will be medium level questions again you will be able to answer these questions you know uh, very easily if you if you have the base if you have the strong base if you have the strong concepts again here also you will be able to answer them you know you'll have to uh, you know uh, put some time but definitely you'll be able to answer them there will be third category which will have around 20 to 25 questions i'm not talking about the percentage i'm talking about the questions out of 150 questions okay so there will be around uh, 20 to 25 questions and you know these questions will be out of box questions wherein you know entire world will go wrong so you you don't have to worry about these questions you know you don't have to worry about that there will you know it's not about csa it's about you know you you take any exam you, you just give any exam you know there will be out of box questions you know so we don't have to worry about the out of box questions okay people start worrying if these out of box questions are you know arranged in a ascending order in the exam so let's say question 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 the initial 25 questions if it is straight away from out of box people get panicked 
in the exam hall that you know i'm not able to answer any question okay but you have to understand that that have that will be out of box questions which you know uh, which you need not worry about okay and uh, the uh, to be very honest you know uh, like uh, there is a scaled score of 800 right and 600 like you know crossing 600 it is very 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 difficult crossing 600 scaled score it is very difficult okay i know uh, Two of my students one of my students uh, they have uh, like he has scored 653 one uh, two persons have scored 643 you know so they were i think you know a, a, one of them was declared uh rank one in in his local chapter okay because the thing is that you know in in cisa exam a uh, u.s based exam they don't try to discriminate people based on the ranks so they will not give you rank one rank two rank three like that they don't want to discriminate uh, students based on the ranks so here what matters is, is the passing okay but uh, you know when uh, when i asked them to you know uh, dig you know like whether uh, like what rank uh, they have uh, like got in their local chapter so one person told me that you know uh, it's it's rank 1 in his local chapter but i can i can uh, tell you that you know 650 643 you know these kind of scores it is not rank 1 in their local chapter but it is rank 1 globally so you have to understand that why people you know cannot score 750 780 790 like that even though it's a mcq based exam there's a reason behind it right so you don't have to worry about these out of box questions but yes you know uh, this medium uh, medium level questions you know this is something you know we have to address it like you know for this to answer these questions correctly like you know to be very honest everyone you know you study for CISA, you don't study for CISA, you'll be able to answer this part very easily you know you whether you uh you have studied or not this part you know you can answer very easily but if you just answer 75 questions correctly out of 150 definitely you'll not be passing the exam okay so you'll you'll be, you'll be scoring between 420 to 445 or 447 something like that okay and this is what majority of the students who fail uh they, their scores are between 420 to 447 okay so this is what is going to change your entire game okay so medium level questions and this is where you have to understand the things you have to understand the concepts all right